In this video, we're going to be taking a look at line plots, and you will need to turn your Go Math book to page 369, get out your math journal, and also a pencil. Now, the essential question that we are going to answer is how can a line plot help you find an average with data given in fractions? Okay, so let's take a look at the unlocking the problem on page 369. It says students have measured different amounts of water into beakers for an experiment. The amounts of water in each beaker is listed below. So you can see all of the beakers here, okay? And it so we need to check out that next section. It says if the total amount of water stayed the same, what would be the average amount of water in each beaker? Okay, now step one, what we need to do, we need to count the number of cups for each amount and draw an X for the number of times each amount is recorded to complete the line plot. Okay, so you can see we have one-fourth, one-half, and three-fourths. Now why do we have those fraction of, fractions over in our line plot? Because those are the fractions that are represented in our story problem. Okay, so what we need to do, count the number of cups for each amount, all right, so we can see that the one-fourth cups, okay, there's already some here that are listed, okay, but you can see we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total. Okay, now there's already four X's, but we need to write three more above this. One, two, three. Okay, now there's seven total X's representing the seven-fourth cups in the list. Now let's take a look at the one-half cups. Okay, so we have one, two one-half cups here. Let's write that down. And then the three-fourths cups, we can see we have one, two, three three-fourths cups. There's already one X there. We'll just put two X's right above. Now what we need to do, we need to count our X's. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven X's for the one-fourth see two X's for the one half. You can see it's a very good way to organize your information. And three fourths, there are a total of three X's for that. Okay, so step two, what we need to do is find the total amount of water in all of the beakers that contain one fourth cup of water. So we know that there are seven beakers with one fourth cup of water. So what we can do, we can multiply seven times one fourth when we multiply 7 times 1 fourth, okay, that's going to equal 7 fourths or 1 and 3 fourths. Okay, so we'll write 7 fourths or 1 and 3 fourths cups. So let's write that down for step 2. Now, step 3. We need to find the total amount of water in all of the beakers that contain one half cup of water. Let me erase this information here. One half cup of water. Okay, so there are two beakers with one half cup of water. So there are two halves, pretty easy to see there, or two over two, which equals one cup. Whenever the numerator and denominator are equal, that does equal just one, okay? So now the next thing we need to do, find the total amount of water in all of the beakers that contain three-fourths cup of water. So we can see there are three X's for three-fourths cups. So what we can do is multiply three times three-fourths, three-fourths representing the fraction, three representing the total amount of water in all of the beakers that contain three-fourths cup of water. Okay, so we can take three times three-fourths. That's going to give me nine-fourths. Okay, whenever you simplify nine-fourths, that's going to give us two and one-fourth. So now we have all the amounts of each cup of water. The next thing we do, we're going to take all of these amounts and we're going to add to find the total amount of water in all of the breakers. I'm sorry, of the, all of the beakers. Okay, so we're going to need to add 1 and 3 fourths plus 1 plus 2 and 1 fourth. So you can see at the bottom I added 1 and 3 fourths plus 1 plus 2 and 1 fourth. Adding the 3 fourths and 1 fourth is going to give me 4 fourths. Okay, then I regroup, I carry over, and I have 1 plus 
1 plus 1 plus 2 is going to give me a total of 5. Okay, so everything equals 5. Okay, so the amount of water in all the, all the beakers does equal 5. And then, since we're finding the average, we need to take, we need to divide that sum that we found in step 5 by the number of beakers to find the average. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking 5 and dividing that by 12. And knowing what we know about how division is related to fractions, we know that the dividend is my numerator and the divisor is the denominator. So we don't have to do a long drawn out problem converting that you know, decimal to a fraction or anything like that. We just know that the dividend is the numerator, divisor is the denominator, so we can easily just see 5 twelfths for our answer. So we can see the average amount of water in a beaker is 5 twelfths of a cup. So a lot of steps that we went through there were, first of all, totaling up the different amounts with our line plot that helps us to stay nice and organized. We add all of these together, then we divide by the total amount of beakers, giving us 5 twelfths. Now let's take a look at the problem on page 370. Okay, so it says, okay, so it says Rainey divides three two-ounce bags of rice into smaller bags. The first bag is divided into bags weighing one-sixth ounce each. The second bag is divided into bags weighing one-third ounce each. And the third bag is divided into bags weighing one-half ounce each. So what we need to do is we need to find the number of one-sixth, one-third, and one-half ounce rice bags, then graph the results on the line plot. So the first thing we need to do for the line plot is we need to write a title. Okay, it, we, it, what it needs to do is describe what we are counting. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll write a title right underneath this line plot. Without a title, it's not going to make sense to anybody. Okay, so we will just call it weight of rice bags. And underneath it, we'll even put in ounces okay for our title put that right in the middle there okay so that should be the title of your line plot now the next thing we need to do is we need to label one six one third and one half on the line plot to show the different amounts into which the three two ounce bags of rice are divided okay so we have one sixth here and then we have one-third. It's always good to go from least to greatest on your line plot, and then one-half. Okay, this all rep represents weight of rice bags in ounces. Okay, now the next thing we need to do for step three, we need to use division to find the number of one-six ounce, one-third ounce, and one-half ounce bags that were made from the three original two-ounce bags of rice. So we can take 2 divided by 1 6, 2 divided by 1 third, and also 2 divided by 1 half. Now, an easy way to do 2 divided by 1 6, we need to think of, uh, of how many 1 6 equals 1 whole. Okay, so we know 1 6, we know 6 of these will equal 1 whole. So we're going to take 2, multiply that by 6, that's going to give us 12. 2 divided by 1 third, we need to think of how many times 1 third will go into 2. So we think about, okay, 1 third, there's 3 1 thirds and 1 whole. So what we can do is take 3, multiply that by 2, going to give us 6. 2 divided by 1 half, think about how many halves are in 1 whole. There are 2 halves and 1 whole. So we can multiply that 2 by 2, giving us 4. So finally, for step four, we would need to draw an x above the one six, one third, or one half to show the number of of rice bags. Okay, so above the one six, we'll have twelve x's. So let's do that together. Just about running out of space here. There we go. Okay, why 12? Because that's what it's represented within our problem. Okay, above the one-third, we're going to have six x's. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, and finally above the one half we have four x's. One, two, three, four. And that concludes our problem. We can see there's twelve one six bags. We have six one third bags and finally four one half bags of rice. Okay, work on the problem on page three hundred seventy one. Work through this. You'll need to put X's on your line plot and complete the whole entire problem. When you're finished, you can press play and I will have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, here are the answers for the problem one on page 371. Now I do want you to do two, three, and four also in your book. So take the information that you see within problem one there and complete two, three, and four. When you're finished, I'll have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, here are the answers for two, three, and four. If you did not get these answers, you may need to rewind the video and watch a couple of the model problems that I did. Okay, I want you to work through this problem on page 371. When you're finished, you can press play and I will have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, so you can see the answers for this problem. All right, we had a total amount of um, five for how much milk is used in all orders of pancakes. So what we did is we took five, divided that by 10. Remember the connection of division to fractions the dividend is the numerator, divisor is the denominator, easily 5 over 10, which is simplified to 1 half. Okay, I want you to work through this test prep problem all by yourself. When you're finished, you can press play, and I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, you can see the answer is letter B. And moving to the essential question, how can a line plot help you find an average with data given in fractions? And you can see the answer below. So this concludes the video on line plots. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.